In the last episode, we built this fantastic new cargo and passenger harbour. And we also increased the density of residential in both Reuben and in Kaplan. And in doing so, we've increased our population from 4,000 to 12,000. But with that has brought a boatload of issues, if you mind the pun. First of all, our unemployment rate is currently through the roof at 31%. So we'll definitely need to have a look at increasing our workplace opportunities in this episode. And secondly, we also need to take a look at our garbage management, where our landfill currently only has a 6% availability. Now I'm not sure whether we can increase the size of our landfill. You can see there's a little bit of space along this abandoned rail line that we could potentially use. Um, but I'm also thinking about our development tree. We've got 21 of these development points that we could use. So, all right, so the landfill that we've got at the moment is currently costing us around about 15,000 a month. The incinerator plant would be a whole lot more, 105, and the recycling center a little bit less at 80. The biggest difference I, I can see between the two is the garbage trucks. You get 50 for the incinerator plant and only 15 for the recycling center. And the processing capacity of the incineration plant is double that of the recycling center. So I think our next step will be to try build the incinerator plant. I think we just need to save up a little bit more money. So for now, I'm just going to expand the the garbage facility so we could just unpause it I don't think we need that pause right now and we'll just stretch this out a little bit find it quite interesting that the landfill will terraform itself you can see that we've got this hilly landscape with all this garbage sitting on it and we even have a little tractor coming through and cleaning everything up Let's see what that looks like in first person, shall we? What a hellscape. I wouldn't want to be working here every day, but somebody's got to do it, so hopefully they're being paid handsomely. There we go. That's, that's giving us a little bit more flexibility, I think. We take a look at the stored capacity, so uh, 980 tons out of a possible 1,366. Oh yeah, lovely, 28%. Yeah, so that should keep us going. That should get us over the line. And once we get enough money to buy that incineration plan, we can possibly look to maybe locate it nearby. We could even buy a tile and put that down as well. All right, so we need to increase employment in the city. And if we take a look at the business wealth, so our industrial wealth has been increasing ever since we placed down the cargo harbor. And I assume the commercial health has also seen an increase, but to further develop more jobs in the city we can look at decreasing the taxes on both commercial and industry and that will help increase the company wealth and they should in turn start to hire more staff so i'm going to do a blanket taxation cut for both commercial and industry i'm not going to be too generous though i think just a simple one percent cut for everything should suffice and I'm going to, going to keep the office as it is. We're already giving quite a generous tax break for these guys. And I think the main reason why we're not seeing the offices being that profitable in the city right now is because we take a look at our education system. All we've got at the moment is an elementary school and we don't have a high school or a college. So at most, we're only going to be producing poorly educated citizens in this town. And offices generally need educated and upwards to highly educated workers. So if we come back over to this village that we put together in the last episode, I did come in and tweak some of the commercial properties. I wasn't a fan of how many gas stations that we had, and some of them had signage that was facing an awkward angle it just didn't make sense for the configuration of the street i mean this is the most desirable gas station configuration with the prices of the fuel being visible from the road and i think we had a couple along here that just had that 
signage facing the wrong way and it just didn't really make a lot of sense to me. And I did also mention that I wanted to put a park down so we could do that here and I've just noticed that we've never actually linked up these roads. So let's grab a pack and see what, what we can fit in this area. The circular pack might be quite interesting because it doesn't have any fences and we don't have access to the large packs yet. So let's unlock those. We've got points to spend. So we need to get the pack maintenance building down at some point and we'll get the large packs. And um, what I'm interested in is this hedge pack. I really like the look of this one. It's a little bit too big for the area. Let's have a look at the passage pack. Again, it's a little bit too big. I think we could squeeze the hedge pack in somewhere. We might lose a couple of properties. I think that should work. Yeah, there we go. Now, is it going to let, let us connect up? Yeah, that's good. So we can bring that beside this house here. And this one we can come to there, lovely. And we'll just clean up some of this zoning. Let's remove this shop here. Don't think we need that. And since we don't have anything built on that side yet, that'd be fine. And we just need to take stock of the pack. And I think what we can do is grab the surface tool and extend some of these textures out. Add a few trees in. And I don't mind this looking a little bit wild around the edges because it's the center of the pack, which is the more manicured section. And the rest of this can be a little bit wilder and provide some shade and cool areas. You mustn't forget the palm trees since we are playing on a lovely trap tropical map today. We do have a few homeless encampments. So even though we have high unemployment in the city, people are still moving in and taking up houses they're just not able to afford here and they end up being homeless so we need to really address our employment issue but i really wanted to put this in because i really think it brings the community together it really does look like a, a great centerpiece the only addition i think we could make here is just add a little bit of parking i know we've got loads of street parking here but we could squeeze down one of these maybe small parking lots there we go, that could be a parking spot for the axe or the, the sound engineer that needs to be around to help make sure the local events get off to a good start. And it looks like we've got our first attendee and we've got a couple of people using it. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I can see this being a really cozy place to come and check out um, a local band or have a little beer festival. And it uh, looks like we're getting plenty of usage. I think this might actually be the only park in the city so far. So it's going to be very popular indeed. Very nice. All right. So we've got a new park in, but that's not going to help our unemployment issue. In the last episode, I did mention we could have a couple of farms here. So it's definitely worth putting those down now. Let's just grab a little alley road so we can link those up. And is there a free space? Yeah, look, we've got a gap between this building and this commercial property here. Let's bring that through and connect that up. And we've got this little tree line here that we can use as the boundary to one of the farms at least. And for this farm, I'm going to go for grain farming. We don't have many of these in the city yet and it's useful for food production and sometimes petrochemicals as well. I'm just gonna come alongside these houses and fill out this space between the trees. There we go, that looks quite nice. And they'll start to hire some people. They've got 13 employees. And for this other farm, I'm going to draw out a new road as well. And I think I might come beside this property this time. There we go, lovely. Two new farms in our village, which we've yet to name. So let's grab the district tool and let's bring this around the entire area. We'll include the farms as well, why not? And we'll bring it along the river here, include the riverbanks, and then we can just bring that up. And it's called Hemlock, Hemlock Corner. And given the location of this village between the river and the hills, I think we can simply call this River Hill. 
not the most imaginative but it gives us an idea of where this city or this part of the city began lovely i wouldn't mind living out here i just wish there was a, a few more services and i'd be happy and we could possibly squeeze in a, a few properties at the back here or maybe some industry create some more jobs add a little farm road through to the other field i think that looks quite nice and we could even put a little bit of parking down here because i know they don't really have much parking in these industrial assets and these lanes don't have any street side parking either and this side i think we could just pop down a couple of smaller industrial units we might be able to get some grain silos or something similar so it looks like we're facing a water shortage so let's go to our budget and bump up the water service fee just a little bit up to 100 and then we should see that resolve themselves or maybe not because we're facing power shortages what's going on oh dear so we've been using this local road let's just pause it for a moment we've been using this gravel road that came with the map to send our power through the network of gravel roads down to the city and we're now facing a bottleneck so we'll need to just bring a power line down this hill here and then we can bring that into this junction here and we should see that resolve itself shortly there we go the water facility is back online and we've got water everywhere i am seeing quite a lot of health icons coming up and i think the main issue is possibly the water supply is polluted it does say there's one percent pollution but i didn't think it would cause this much of an issue so we'll keep an eye on it generally speaking though the health of the city is quite low where at average health of 54 percent so whether it's the proximity to the industrial estates with the ground pollution or it's the polluted water. Either way, it's causing an increase in healthcare need. And it looks like we have 115 sick and injured, but only capacity for 50. So those that are not able to seek help are probably dying. So taking a look at the water pollution, I'm not really seeing anything near the pump itself, but it does share an aquifer with this industrial estate in Ruben. So that may be contributing to the pollution. But otherwise I can't imagine the 1% being an issue. So we're at the top end of the blue section, nowhere near the yellow or the brown section. And I think if we were to have a serious issue with water pollution this info view just doesn't make sense to me because if one percent is causing as many problems as i think it might be causing then we should be seeing something much more urgent here in terms of a water pollution crisis but i, I have just seen this industrial building here which is situated just across the road and I'm wondering whether this is what could be causing one of the issues. So let's rezone that into an office for now. And maybe that will resolve our problems. Alternatively, we might just need to have higher healthcare coverage in the city. I think we are giving 100% of the service budget if we take a look so we're only giving 90 percent. so let's bump that up to 100 and we might even want to consider adding a medical facility a larger one we currently have the small clinic which only have a patient capacity of 100 and the one we originally had down it had a patient capacity of 100 so i might need to roll back the closure of the medical clinic and bring that back into service so that we can help these sick and injured people now I had it down here by the waterfront, but as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of congestion around here and I don't think that would be a good place for ambulances to maneuver. 
So we do have a little bit of a city service area here with the firehouse and the police station. So maybe we could just uh, tuck this in alongside here. And with that we should get plenty more uh, spaces for patients. Uh, but it does feel like I've probably got an issue with health somewhere. Whether it's caused by the water pollution or whether it's the fact that I built much of the city very close to our industrial areas i'm not too sure but time will tell we're still seeing an increase in population we've already increased by around about a thousand people since we've started this episode and if we keep on growing we've got plenty of people to replace those that unfortunately pass away so even though we've built an extra clinic we still might see a pretty big death wave because we're just not able to reach all the patients in time and it's mostly down to the fact that we just have so much traffic funneling through this single road and we might need to start to look at upgrading this so that we can allow more throughput and i think one of the main issues is this roundabout we've got so many people using it it's starting to become so congested i think what i'll do is i'll remove the roundabout and that will add lights to it and i'm, I'm going to straighten this road up as well this is a road that we had built in the first episode where I did the bendy shape but to be honest I think this could quite easily be a nice straight angle here yeah and we can plug that in and that gives us some a nice little zonable area alongside this road here now what we can do is we can use the asymmetric road to increase the capacity of this section so Let's grab that and let's upgrade this side here and this bridge could look at having a small upgrade as well there we go so with traffic lights that should help control the pedestrians crossing and the vehicle movements all right that looks like it's sorting itself out it's uh, quite busy which is uh, quite nice to see i like to see lots of traffic in the city and it looks like a lot of the traffic along here has cleared out as well. We've got a little bit down here, probably near these car parks because we do have a severe shortage of car parks in the old town itself. So we'll probably need to add some of that in the future. Having a look at our unemployment, I think we're still quite high, yeah, 31.3%. So increasing or decreasing the taxes for commercial and industry hasn't really done a lot yet but time will tell we probably just need to let that run a little bit longer another thing that we can add that can create a whole ton of jobs is the signature buildings so when we were placing down the farms we unlocked the dairy house which has a large workforce if i remember correctly and I think that this would be quite nice down here near the cargo harbour just to extend the industrial look we've got going on in the area. And I think it might be interesting to even extend this jetty out and add it in here. Harbours and waterfronts traditionally were always quite industrial areas. They weren't the most scenic and nice places to visit historically, especially when you had a lot of cargo trade and fishing companies set up around those areas and I think that will fit quite nicely into our industrial area of the bay here so I'm going to grab the terraforming tool and we're just going to bring out this land a little bit so let's just pinch the height here and we'll come to here and then we'll just follow the coast along a little bit and we can fix up this beach texture afterwards. Now we do have this four lane road that runs along the beach here, which we, we put in in the last episode when we originally had the cargo harbor further into the water. It does seem a little bit surplus to requirement now, but uh, I'm happy to keep it just to add a little story to the city. It's one of those planning mistakes that never really got fixed. And in the future, maybe we can add some bus lanes or a tram line through the middle. So we'll keep it for now and it makes the city just a little bit more unique. 
So let's grab the dairy house from our landmarks menu and see if we can squeeze this in. It looks like we just need to increase the size of the land just a little bit more and then that should fit in nicely. Just there. Lovely. Let's bring this coast right up to the edge of this asset. All right, that gives us a new beach area here. And for this surface along here, I think what we can do is we can use our pathways and we can lock this to the side of the building. Bring that across here. And we create a much smaller key using the footpath instead. Yeah, that looks quite nice. I'm just going to fix up some of the textures in the asset and maybe even just bring out this little pier here so that maybe they have some smaller cargo boats coming up to this asset and do some unloading and loading. All right, so there's the new dairy house and I'd like to think maybe it's not a dairy house, maybe it's some sort of food manufacturing uh, company. Uh, nevertheless, they could be importing importing anything from overseas, bringing it, bringing it in through the cargo port. And I've got this little jetty out front, which I think looks quite nice with this uh, covered walkway down to this um, lower area in the water. Prior to this, I extended out the concrete texture that comes with the asset and replace most of the light colored gravel. I found that it contrasted better with the beach than having the light gravel here which kind of looked a little bit odd. I did keep a little bit down this side here. Uh, I think that looks fine and we've got a couple of car parking spots just to the side which are proving to be extremely popular. And it looks like we've added some lights here by accident, so let's just remove those. And uh, yeah, you can see we really need to up our ante when it comes to car parks in the city, for sure. And I think the main culprit is because we use these alley roads everywhere, and these row homes don't actually come with any parking, which is a shame because you do often get um, parking garages or even parking spaces uh, at the back of row homes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. It's not too close to the shipping lanes either. And we have 87 employees. Not too bad. Looks like our medical issue has sorted itself out. So whether it was that industrial unit that was close to the water pump, I'm not too sure. Or whether it was the congestion that we had through the city. Either way, we're looking a lot healthier. The citizen health has gone up just a little bit. We were sitting at 51% and now we're at a nice healthy 57. And you can see we've got capacity for 150. So we've got 25 beds available for those that need them. All right, so I'm looking at this industrial area and I'm not 100% sure that they are increasing the employee count as fast as I'd like. And I'm looking at the efficiency here and we can see they are getting penalized because of the lack of internet and the lack of mail. So I wonder whether if we put these services down that should help increase company profitability and therefore increase workplace count. So we'll start off with the internet since that's probably the most basic one to put down. And we'll probably need a few of these if we want to cover the entire area. Maybe we just want to use these in the industrial areas. How much are these per month? They're going to cost around about 5,000 a month. And if we look at our budget, we are closing out at about 340,000 a month. So plenty of money in the bank account. I'm just wondering whether it's worth getting the bigger telecom tower now let's have a look at this. so it's four to unlock let's just do it since we've got the points we can do it we're spending all the development points this episode by the looks of it 
And this one should give us so much more. Co Look at that. The whole town is covered. And this one, yeah, see, it's only two and a half times more a month uh, in upkeep. Twelve and a half thousand. Definitely think it's worth investing in the large telecom tower early on and if we have a look we're probably thinking about somewhere in the middle here or even on the harbour but a lot of that coverage is wasted out to sea so we could even go as high as up here and cover up the whole starting tile now we are on a very hilly map and you can see it's quite interesting i've not really noticed this in other maps but the coverage is greatly impaired uh, by the topography. So if you see, if you put it down this valley here, it's quite interesting. I like that. I can't imagine there's going to be very much traffic up here, so we can just simply use the gravel road. There we go, we've got uh, a lovely road sneaking up this hillside now. It was quite difficult with the steep terrain, but I managed to put it in there without too many steep areas. This one's still quite steep, so I might just change this one up again. Let's use the gravel one again, and if we lower it just a little bit, it should bring down the ground just enough to allow us to connect that in. There we go, that looks a little better. It doesn't need to be perfect. We won't really be taking a close look at this area very often. All right, yeah, I think that looks quite nice. And that should be covering most of the city. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit orange in these distant neighborhoods, but I'm pretty happy with the coverage. And for mail, I'd like to simply just put down the small mail office. I don't think we need anything larger at the moment. We'd probably keep this one up in our city service district. Let's put it alongside the clinic there. And what we can also do is put down some mailboxes. So we definitely need to put one down in this warehouse district. And we can just place that in the middle here. I need to put a couple down actually. There we go, that area is pretty well served. And then we can put another one here. And here. Oh, and we definitely need to put one down here. Looks like we're not getting very much coverage there at all. And uh, yeah, there's a few red roads, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, there's people living along here. I mean, they, they probably appreciate a mailbox doesn't cost very much to put these down or if anything I don't think there's any maintenance fees otherwise it'd probably mention it and we mustn't forget about River Hill they will surely want one and we can place that down by the park can't we people can come through the park and drop something off so we'll place that just next to this lamppost all right, so we've got pretty good mail coverage now and telecom coverage, so that should help improve our workplace or our industrial efficiency. And we should hopefully see these start to level up as their wealth increases. And I don't think we've made a dent yet in our unemployment. Oh, not too bad actually. We've dropped around about 5%, so we're at 26 uh oh, looks like we've got a fire on the hillside here and I'm a little bit worried that it's spreading towards the town. And all we've got is a fire engine which looks like there's one on the way. Which is good, um, but it might be worth us having maybe a fire watchtower in this area because it is quite wooded. It does decrease the response time by 80% and it does reduce the forest fire hazard by 10% so it's definitely worth looking at maybe adding one of those so let's go to our fire branch and let's pick up one of those and let's put one of these in somewhere where's going to be a good spot maybe in a similar spot to the 
telecom tower or maybe we could add a couple of these in I know they do need to have a a power connection and we can see the edge of the tile map area is around about there so maybe we can place them along the edge of the map so that we can see and prevent any fires before they get close to us and I think there's a nice little spot here and let's have a look at that info view again and we can see the area of effect is quite low it's probably because of the budget let's go to our fire and rescue budget and reset that back to a hundred percent and you can see that purple ring has increased again and we probably need to put one somewhere around here a hill point just here that we might be able to squeeze onto the side it's a shame we can't put it right at the top maybe we just put it on this there's a little perch here i quite like and then we just need to grab our electrical cable and link that up so that one's in lovely and they should have a good view of the city from up here that's not bad is it i wouldn't mind that for a day job watching as the boats come into the harbour these farms are looking really good they're creating such a nice uh, what will be the backdrop to the city this is quite a nice look for a new city all low rise we've got a few little chimneys a few little rooftops i really like the row housing i think it's a great way at getting a lot of people into a small space so as you can see i've put a bunch of farms in um, a few more around river hill and uh, we've got a few flanking this road coming into town here and then i've also added a couple of more around this river area here and over down by south bay and i don't think we've made dent yet uh, let's have a quick look at the employees the unemployment status so yeah it's gone up even just a little bit 27 percent. so it's just more and more people are moving in so we started around about twelve and a half thousand at the start of this episode and we're already seeing population growth by two and a half thousand so yeah unemployment it was coming down and now it's just going back up again All right, so I've gone ahead and expanded the warehouse districts. So let's just grab the district tool and uh, well, what, actually, why don't we name this a new district and we'll just bring that out to here and cover all this up. You can call this since we're near the the turbines, which uh, oh no, we're running out of power. Let's have a look. We're just edging into the danger zone. So I wonder if we can add any more upgrades to any of these. So what we can do is we can start to put these solar assists on and these can offer up to 2 megawatts depending on how sunny it is and we'll just apply this to all of them shall we so we're currently producing 45 but i guess you need to wait for the the solar panels to kick in and uh, there we go 52 megawatts yeah back to this industrial estate so it's called cooper creep but uh, since we've just installed a, a load of uh, solar panels, why don't we call this uh, Solar Hills? And I believe the, the wind direction is taking it all away from our city, yeah, so that's good. 
Um, still battling the unemployment. We're at 18.2% now, so it is coming down. And I did increase the taxes for residential just slightly, and I think we're slowly getting there. We're seeing a lot of growth still, a lot of traffic, most of it caused by people moving in. We're getting lots of taxes. But the good thing is it's still moving, and that's the main positive to look at these types of queues and there's a couple of despawning as well it is if it's still moving it's still functioning and uh, we can look to improve it in the future and let's just check out this ferry are we getting much usage that's pretty good 51 passengers i mean these these ferries themselves can hold so many people i think around about yeah 2800 wow i'm not sure if we'll ever be able to fill one of these bad boys but I'm still happy to see that we've got people coming and going using this way. And similarly with our cargo ships, each one of these holds a thousand tons, which is equivalent to 40 semi trucks off the road, which would have been coming in via the singular road that we have. I've just seen that we've got a garbage issue down by the groundwater pump and that's severely affecting the efficiency. I did bump up the service budget by 50% so you can see we're getting a 25% bonus and that is managing to save the city from lack of water but uh, we're reaching breaking point. We have a crisis down by the landfill. We're pretty much at max capacity. We only have space for another 100, 150 tons so I think the time is now to either place down another landfill or look at getting that incinerator it's going to cost us a million dollars and i think we might have to take out a loan so if we have a look at our budget we are looking at a monthly income of five hundred and eighty-eight thousand. so we're going to need at least eight hundred thousand, i think to cover all the infrastructure costs and i think we also need to buy a tile to place this so i'm thinking we'll need around about 1.2 million and that will take us up to about 1.57 million in the bank. And that will mean we're paying back 141,000 a month, which is well below our monthly income. So we'll be in a surplus of around about three, 400,000. So I'm gonna take that. I wouldn't usually recommend taking loans, but I know that we've got a pretty stable, pretty good and stable income, and it will continue to be a good income as long as we are collecting garbage and if we don't this whole city is going to fall to pieces so if anything always keep an eye on your garbage facilities i'm really tempted to buy this tile which is not connected to the main city and the reason being we have this main connection from the outside so let's just turn that info view off and we've got this roundabout and you can see we've got all these different roads intersecting and a few times now i have seen there being a few backups so i think if we purchase this tile to place the incinerator plant not only can we start to upgrade the road that takes most of the traffic into the city um, we'll also be able to place down the incinerator plant and also kind of uh, capitalize on any natural resources out here which i imagine is probably farming yeah so we've got a little bit of farming here so let's purchase this one it's only 270 so it's not too bad and the monthly upkeep is around about 30 so i think we can handle that and so with that purchased the good thing about this map is all the roads are electrified and the power generated from the incinerator plant will be able to travel through the highway road all the way into the city and if we face a bottleneck similar to how we had on the windmill hill uh, there's alternative routes for the electricity to run through we have a couple of highway roads running to the uh, east of the island and a few kind of doubling back around the hill so i think uh, even though this is quite isolated uh, this is a really good area to maybe look at future uh, development. It's very flat. We've got this beautiful little bay um, looking out to the open ocean. We have this external connection here so we could potentially upgrade those connections as well. 
And uh, yeah, let's get the incinerator plant down. And to ensure we've got power running under the roads, especially these new ones, we'll go to our road upgrade tab and select the lighting and we'll just upgrade these and any that don't have them. And that should carry all the electricity into town. And with this one down here, um, we could potentially look at exporting energy in the future or once we've uh, overburdened the underground a cabling system that runs into the city we can start to create some high voltage lines but for now I'm just going to simply bury one of these under the ground just so that we don't have the icon annoying us and to do that we just need to create a square shape there we go and we should be up and running so if we turn it on and we'll just have a quick look at our monthly budget so you can see we've taken a significant hit now with the loan interest at 141,000 per month and our service upkeep has also jumped so let's jump into the service and have a look we can probably turn down the water now and it looks like we have water and sewage issues at the incinerator plant i had actually planned to put this down it wasn't a complete oversight so let's grab the water tower and see where that could go we'll put that there there we go that should be enough and now we need to figure out a way to get sewage water out of here and we don't have access to the shoreline here so i think as optimistic as i am we'll just pause the game momentarily we're going to need to buy this tile like it, there's no doubt about it we need to have access to uh, the water to be able to remove the sewage regrettably we're going to buy another tile but we've got 11 tile permits available and we could either go this way or this way uh, because we it this would give us a connection to the ocean as well but i feel like this is a natural uh, fit to the area we're developing it's enclosed by this road and this rail and we can maybe even put a farm in here so we'll purchase that and we're almost out of money so we make we better get this sewage outlet down as soon as possible we'll just place this in the middle here and this doesn't need to have any electricity it only needs a sewage pipe and we'll connect that up here so let's take a look at our new incineration plant so yeah it's going to cost us around about 200 230,000 per month to run but we can turn the budget down and save some money there and it will also employ 60 people we're not currently producing any electricity at the moment because they're still sending out trucks to collect garbage and there's a total of 50 trucks which is way more than what we had before when we just had the landfill the only worry of having this out here is because it's along one of our main roads into the city is it may get caught up in congestion but i purposely chose this site near this roundabout so that if there is an issue on this road going into town similarly uh, to the electricity bottleneck the vehicles can find an alternative way around and it looks like we've got the first garbage truck coming into the city so let's see where it's going and it's completely missed the groundwater pump we've got another one here let's see if that one's going to it and it's completely missed it as well okay so we've got lots of garbage trucks coming in but they're completely skipping the groundwater pump station which is extremely annoying is anyone going to come in and collect the garbage because the city is really struggling here without the water all right this is getting beyond a joke now like they have not had any garbage picked up for two weeks now like why uh, the truck oh there we go finally finally we've got this truck coming in and how much how much garbage have you got on board you've already got a full load so have you collected it all probably not sometimes this just and we should be in a good place with our water now so this is 
uh, you come along here along the highway and this is a mix of commercial and there's a few industrial units at the back as well and yeah it's looking really nice some of the orientations of the buildings are a little bit odd i think this one could do with being rotated 90 degrees you can just simply uh, bulldoze that and get something with an entrance at the front and that should look a little bit better now this one i don't mind too much because it does have some signage on the side of the building and you can imagine maybe people parking up at the front here and most of these are okay i mean this is a, a little bit odd as well with the entrance on this side so we can replace that too that one looks good that one's fine most of these are very similar and they kind of look okay to me and uh yeah i mean we've we're slowly reducing the uh, unemployment number if we take a look at it now uh, we're down to 11% that's pretty good like we were like way over 30 at the beginning of the episode putting down all these farms has uh, greatly reduced uh, that number and brought in a lot more tax money as well and I think it just makes the city look so much more complete as well like a city isn't just the blocks with the buildings on where the people live and the factories uh, lie but it, it's also the surrounding area so having these farms here it really gives us a, an idea of what we can develop in the future and areas that we might not be able to develop you know some farmers might not want to sell up so maybe a road has to go around it or maybe we have to build a train track in a different direction but i can also see these uh looking pretty good as uh, residential developments as well we can uh, develop one pocket at a time and uh, it should look a little bit more natural and um, more organic which is something a bit of a buzzword that people are always using when it comes to city building but i, I always find that it's good to have a mix of uh, both grid and curvy shapes in your city especially in these downtown areas when we're going to be putting some larger buildings in the future the great thing about having all these roads around the map is we can also annex different sections uh, that are not connected to the main city and put some of, some of our more polluting projects further out so they're not affecting the citizens and uh, I didn't show this earlier but the air pollution in this area is all blowing away from the city uh, out to sea there's a small vortex in the center of this map here and it blows both outwards towards the main city and it also blows out towards the coast and our external connection down here and uh, yeah i'm pretty excited about doing this kind of annexation in other parts of the map and uh, yeah i think it'll be quite interesting quite exciting the only issue is now that we might be over producing water in this area or we might be allowing too much sewage out and because the network of pipes isn't a singular one the service budget is a little bit more difficult to manage it might be optimum in one area of your map but not another so it's it's something to consider and if you're worried about balancing the budget and playing around with service fees i i would suggest just avoiding it All right, so this is probably as much decoration I'll do in the incineration tiles. Just a couple of farms that flank either side of it just to fill out the space. I think it looks quite nice. And I've put a few bushes along the road as well just to create an area of separation. And uh, yeah, I think this looks quite nice, especially for something that lives as a standalone asset outside of the main city i think this works i also uh, fudged this oh, auto save 
I also fudged this um, sewage pipe to sit at the end of this road and if we go into to the water pipes you can see that it's pumping sewage out to the outlet. Now I don't mind uh, having a few of these around the city with the latest patch update the uh, pollution that this causes um, isn't as bad. Well I think maybe the pollution is still fairly significant. It's not too bad but the deterioration of the colouring of the water is vastly improved compared to what we had before. Uh, I'm happy to put this down. It's only costing us around about 12,000 per month and given that we're pulling in almost half a million a month uh, coming up to that I imagine by the end of the episode we can easily afford it and it gives us the opportunity to build in places like this uh, away from the main drag and similarly the water tower is 18,000 per month and it'd be interesting to see how much is being used so 83% usage so this isn't connected up to anything else in the city this incinerator plant and these couple of farms are using are almost using the entire capacity of this water tower that's quite interesting and we've even we've even still got the the budget up just a little bit to increase the efficiency and we're almost uh, depleting this resource our unemployment rate has dropped down to 10.2% and it would be much lower if our population wasn't continuing to grow. So we did start off the episode at around about 12,000 and we're already seeing around about a 50% increase. So we're up to 17,000 and I, I've already increased the job count by around about 50% as well. And it's just really difficult to keep up with the population boom. I think our health coverage is doing fairly well now. We're up in the dark green and our sick and injured has come down. We were over 100 earlier and we're now around about 78. So I don't think the uh, groundwater pump station is uh, causing a negative effect to the health, even though there is a slight bit of pollution here. I think it's working uh, just well as it is. And now that we've got the new incineration plan out here, um, they will be collecting the, all the rubbish uh, from the groundwater pump so hopefully given that we've got uh, 50 vehicles available to us we shouldn't we shouldn't be experiencing any garbage piling up anymore and uh, we should start seeing electricity generated here as well uh, so we're generating a small amount 12 megawatts which is not very much compared to uh, our windmill production so our windmills are producing around about uh 52 megawatts dairy house and they're currently employing around about 127 people so that's pretty good and we're not seeing too much traffic down here i was a little bit worried about placing this uh in close proximity to our downtown but i think it helps having the cargo harbor here you can already see that they're shipping out some goods we've got 20 tons of chemicals heading out and we've got a healthy stock of pretty much everything else in the that the city might need. I started putting a, down a few car packs around here. You can see uh, this is around about uh, over 50% full. And we've got a few others in the city as well that I placed in between some of these row homes so that people had somewhere to pack their cars. As I said, I, I really wish the row homes did have some parking. Maybe not as much as single family homes, but... Uh, I think if a row home is backing onto a road, uh, they should be able to have some sort of like parking garage. And I, 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 st I think we're still lacking parking in the city itself. And the, the main reason is we just don't have any public transport here. And if people are working down in the valley or in River Hill, uh, the only way to get about is by car, especially if they're working down by the new incineration plant there's no way they're going to walk all the way down there so uh, vehicles are very much needed if you're going to live in this city but we will have a look at public transport soon i think we're definitely on the cusp of needing some bus lines through here for sure we do have a little bit of a pinch point down here with our only bridge that uh, passes over this river 
at this part of the river at least and we do have our bypass bridge up here and I was seeing quite a lot of traffic down here but it has calmed down now and I think one of the main reasons is uh, all the available homes are filled in now so we don't have as many people moving in and it also does help having the harbour here as well it takes off a lot of vehicles off the road. I also put down a few walking paths and I did this in an earlier episode when I put down these farms so a lot of people will walk to work if they have the opportunity. I've got a little footbridge here that connects up with uh, River Hill Village and this little uh, rural interstate shopping area. I'm not seeing anyone using it right now but people do use these paths to get about and I've got pretty much the whole area out here all the way down to the valley connected up with paths and sometimes you see people using them like there's somebody walking here we're doing quite well when it comes to our traffic flow we're at the standard 60% that you normally see and yes we've got a few uh, orange and red roads but I'm not seeing any backups for now uh, I like to have a look at the traffic volume this sh this will highlight all our major routes through the city and as you can imagine we've got this bypass road that is very popular taking vehicle traffic down to the warehouse district and then we've got the main drag that takes you into the city also very popular and I imagine this road will eventually need to be upgraded over time and we do have some traffic down by the uh, the city entrance uh, but it's moving as I said if the traffic is moving I'm happy to see it so I'm going to call it there thank you very much for joining this episode on Sunny Isle I really appreciate all the likes all the comments that I've been receiving uh, I've been reading the feedback it's greatly appreciated and I look forward to seeing you in the next one goodbye